Kane is Nam Sahia at Ngosi Tos Fahid from within. With me today, I have Robin Snow, Carol Ann Cooper, and Dr. Laura. And Dr. Laura, um, oh, oh she's gone. Uh, Carol Ann, you chose this topic how to celebrate, how celebrating helps you be more successful. Could you please tell the audience why you chose this topic? Uh, Carol Ann? This, I'm here. Can you hear me? I am here. Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. Let's carry on. So let's celebrate that you can hear me. <laughs> and let's continue. And um, it's something that um, someone I know, she's always talking about celebrate. Uh, have you celebrated, you know, when you've, you've achieved something? And when I used to be part of a, a accountability group used to meet up each week. One of the things that uh, was on the list was how are you going to celebrate if you achieve what you set out to do? And I, I don't know. I don't know. And it's something I don't feel always that comfortable with. So I think maybe it's something great to look at, actually, because there is something about celebrating that helps you feel better. It helps you feel more positive. So actually looking into this might help me to celebrate more on the wins that I do rather than just letting them go by, you know? <laughs> so that's where this topic came from. And uh, so it'd be interesting to see what other people have got to say. Thank you, Robin about the topic how do you relate to this topic <laughs> um yeah um i mean i think celebrating is is always a good thing i don't see um i'm trying to think about how it relates to me i'm like i mean i i feel like i celebrate a lot of things um i feel like that's a an important step to move on to bigger and better things is to make sure that you're celebrating your accomplishments and, and having that reflection time. For me, I think it's more about reflection um, than it is about like fully celebrating. Um, just having that time to, to ensure that you have properly gone through all of the things and, and are ready to move on, I guess, would be kind of where I would relate to. Um, but I think it's a lovely topic, and I'm excited to, to hear what everyone else says as well. Dr. Laura? Yes. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Brene Brown. And uh, she recently, well, within the last year, released a, a book, a new book called Atlas of the Heart. And she uh, categorizes 87 different emotions. And I forget which category she has these this German, but uh, there's um, a German, there's two German terms and they're called Freudenfreude, that's not pronouncing it very, very well, and Schadenfreude. And I'll start with Schadenfreude, which is individuals taking joy, pleasure, when others don't achieve their goals. I don't, I don't even wanna say fail. Um, and when I heard that, I was taken aback for the first time, and I thought, "What? Are you, what are you joyful that another didn't didn't succeed? I mean, how, how?" And that connection, which Brene Brown is is, is often, she often, well, she 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 suggests she, she um, articulates that connection is why we're here, and those who do not, those who are not able to connect are, I think she thought are. Um, that they're not vulnerable and they don't, they lack empathy and thus they could be considered sociopaths. That those are her words, not mine. And the thing about it is that connecting with others, joining together, aligning with others who also take joy in seeing others fail or their pain. It's just, it, I even just now had a, a twist in my gut. And 
I don't understand that. And she indicates that connecting, aligning with others who take pleasure in the pain of others can't last. The connection is, is superficial and it's not meaningful because connecting up to someone about somebody else, it's not with, between the two people really, the individuals who connect. And then there's Freudenfurta. And this one I just love and and I do, I celebrating it's, it's having joy while when others succeed. And I, when she said it the first time, I was like, of course, yes. And there's nothing, I think I'm hearing a little background. I'm not sure, um, hope that's my, not my mic. But um, I thought, you know, of course, I mean, if I'm, if you, you, if you win, I'm, and the beautiful thing about that is that I'm just trying to get through the day. I am getting through the day, being me and being the best version of me. I don't need to be number one, except my number one, my best, no one else's best. And because you can take care of yourself, I will support you for sure. And I mean, just now just talking about it, it's just, um, there's such joy in seeing others shine because I'm on that team. I'm not alone. And moreover, I'm not lonely because when you win, I win. And I don't even mean in a, in a, a narcissistic way. It's just propelling others up, lifting up and it, extending a hand out when needed and um, having it be accepted is validating. And I'm an external validation junkie with an inferiority complex. I own that. So if that's what it's going to take for me to um, shine, because, and it's not that it's needed, it's just, uh, it just feels good. And just, yeah, it's like, a feel, I feel more grounded knowing that even as a foundation, not because of me, but as a base of supporting. And that feels really good. So that's what came to mind when, um, when hearing about the topic. So that's my share. Celebrating, celebrating. I think celebrating, uh, uh, when you celebrate yourself, and and when you celebrate your success, it means that you are acknowledging the hard work that you have done. And uh, that's why sometimes I think at Ngozi talk shows, if you have noticed, I've always tell people off when they're negative and I'm like, this, we need to celebrate each other uh, because it is very important to, you know that those little things that we do, they make us different. And uh, if we don't, if we can't celebrate the things that we do. Who is going to celebrate us? Who is going to celebrate your friends if you can't celebrate them? If you can't be happy for them? So I think it is really, really nice to uh, some people when they see others winning, they're like, "But why? In why not winning? Why is it not happening to me? Uh, why is it not happening for me? It always happens for other people." And guess what? The energy that you bring and that energy is is, is going to bring more and more. Hi, Sharon. Hi, you do. So it is nice to actually learn to celebrate others, to celebrate our friends when they are winning. Like, and also ask them, how are they doing it? And they will teach you what they know. And uh, when the more you celebrate people, the more you celebrate your life, it means more blessings. Uh, and uh, Carol Ann loves this. She does this unknowingly sometimes. Every time I ask her something, something is going on in my life, and I'm like asking a question, and I'm looking for an advice. She always, what do you think? What, what, what brought this to you? <laughs> so I'm like, if I, if I, if I, get really like his user i have to celebrate because she's taught me that i do not want anything bad to bring something to me i need to be grateful for these little things that i i do or that people do in life and it's very 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 important and um i hope um if anyone is watching today and they're gonna start celebrating themselves because some people they believe that is only celebrating big news and uh okay can i ask you questions like carol and, uh, uh, and robin there are some people who actually celebrate uh, themselves 
but that celebration it doesn't last long uh, how can they change their mindset or create a habit where they really acknowledge what they have done because you you find that some people they'll get like good news and things like that. but that celebration it, it lasts for a day and then tomorrow is another day they've forgotten what they achieved or what their friends have achieved and then moved on from it and how can you have a mindset of keep acknowledging each and every day keep acknowledging these little things and celebrate them big small wins or big wins uh, um, so i think it's recognizing where you are constantly moving on to the next problem and that you just quick celebration that's it and it's a <coughs> because it's like okay so what's your mind what are you thinking maybe what's your past what have you been brought up with because very often there's a training that's gone on as you've grown up that you don't keep on with the celebration right no, no time to knuckle down again keep going what's the next step you know what's the next goal and so maybe it's having um popping these wins on a, a post-it note popping them into a a bowl you just fold them up pop them in a bowl have four times when you're feeling a bit low so you can just pick out something and think oh yeah i remember that. because i've got no other way of remembering it things do they do sort of slip into the past so that's something that you could how you could still remember it but it also then helps you when you're feeling a bit low uh, in a particular moment it just helps to boost you also recognize where you have brought up with that thinking of why right, time to move on and question it question it why why is it there is there a fear that maybe you'll slip into some sort of lethargy and give it all the, oh well that's it I'm done you know I, I've so if there is a fear of that do some work on it because it can be and it can only happen to happen and maybe there was a time that you did celebrate and you decide and it did slip you into well okay I've achieved that and I'm happy and you didn't move on. Again, address those situations because it's all right to give yourself a bit of time to celebrate. And however long you want to celebrate or however short, there is no set formula for it. This is your celebration. What you're going to celebrate, how you're going to celebrate, is up to you but certainly it's the <clears throat> not just the big things it's the little things as well anything little that you've achieved acknowledge it celebrate it and say how are you going to celebrate it and there can be lots of different ways which you celebrate you need to keep it there write it down on a post-it just fold it in half pop it in a bowl or a, a jar or something for future reference when you're feeling a bit low. You put your hand in, pick it out and go, oh yes. Another thing, if you want to just have a wall, a celebration wall, and you just pin things up on the wall. And it's something that you can look at every now and again. You know? Just to go, oh yes. Yeah, that's great. I remember that. But the thing is, with a, a wall, we tend to ignore it a while. So refreshing it, keep refreshing it. Um, so Robin, what, what are your thoughts in answer to Nonsense's question? Or taking yeah, this on? I actually I wanted to also just uh, echo what Dr. Laura had said. So um, kind of sparked something in me just about celebrating other people's success. Um, I think totally true 1000%. I, I almost find that easier 
um, to celebrate other people's success than my own. Um, but it really creates a success mindset. It does. Um, and also, you know, increases your chances of collaboration um, with others, as well as like other people want to be around you, right? Which I just feel like everyone and then everyone boosts you up. So I feel like giving, you can't lose by giving, right? And, and um, that kind of comes back and reflects on you as well. As far as um, what Nams's question was of ways to celebrate, um, this is something my sister came up with. I actually, I'm not a thousand percent sure if she came up with it or if she heard it somewhere and just adopted it, but um, it's genius. And it's something that I've tried to do over the years. Um, obviously I've been a business owner for a long time, so I haven't needed one, but uh, they're called, a, it's called a brag file. And um, it's something that she, every time she receives a letter of recommendation, anytime she receives, um, you know, a certificate of accomplishment or, you know, anything, like literally anything, it could be an email from a boss saying, good job. It could be, um, you know, a sticky note from your kid saying you're amazing, whatever. She pops it in this file. And um, obviously it's great to review it and like, when you have time to look through those things and remind yourself of like, I'm pretty awesome, right? It's like a consistent reminder that like over the years I have, you know, done X, Y, Z and, and I've done super amazing things. And then the best part is, is that, you know, anything pertaining to business, she then brings her brag file into her, into her interviews with her. And it's, uh, you know, a point of recognition. Like I have all of these cover letters or all of these, um, reference letters, all of these, you know, amazing things outlining my achievements, right? And it's a fantastic, it's a unique way to go into a job interview and be like, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Here's all the proof, mm -hmm. right? It's not just my resume. It's like, literally, this is all of the people that I've come across that have said amazing things about me. Um, and I think it's her secret to getting jobs, honestly, because <laughs> it's a great it's a it's a fantastic tool to use, and it also makes her feel really good because when she's preparing for her her interview, she can read through all of those things again and be like, "I am amazing, I feel super confident now, and I can get this job." Right? Success builds success. So when you can constantly review it, and you can remind yourself of your achievements. You know, you're going to have that confidence to move forward and go into the interview or go into whatever and feel good about yourself and ready to challenge it, right? If you go in with your, you know, a lack of self-esteem or, you know, not that kind of success mindset, you're probably not gonna get the job. You're probably not gonna get what you want, it, want in the end. Um, so I do think that uh, that could be a really beautiful way of celebrating, of celebrating. Um, all of the things that Carol Ann said were also really lovely. Um, and like Dr. Laura had said, like sharing success stories, right? Building each other up. I even find that um, on my social media, like as a small business owner, on social media, sharing our success actually gives us more success in the end because our, our clients are like, yes, this is amazing. And then they feel more inclined to continue to, to give to our business as well. So um, yeah, I don't know. Dr. Laura, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I do have a, a brag file and it's, I didn't call it that though, um, but I, yeah, I use it and a lot, most of it comes when I was teaching and, and I, I actually kept the, uh, when I was, when I was at university, I required, well, I, I gave points for the students. To, it was a whole day, uh, one, one class session and um, they, it was called a small group instructional diagnosis. SIGID and an external um, person from outside, not, not, not another student and someone who um, was admin for the department came in and I wasn't there. And they would, they would get, get into groups and they would collectively evaluate and with qualitative instead of circling bubbles and filling in bubbles. Um, and they would fill out questions like, um, what did you like about the class? What did you like about the instructional methods? Um, and uh, the, the book and what whatnot, and, uh, and it was interesting to see how they evolved just even over the span, even two years the difference it made, especially because I was I was less stressed and it wasn't about gotta get all these got to get all the, all the um, curriculum in it was more about engagement with the students and 
And it was so gratifying. I mean, just like questions like, you know, literally the things like you changed my life and I mean, things like that. And uh, I, sometimes I do go back on LinkedIn. And uh, but what I really love is, and this is so fun, especially when it's not expected, is giving kudos, especially on, on live social media. It's not even, not live, but on social media, it's not even um, that there's a, a success per se. It's the impact that someone has had through interacting with them or a interaction that I've had. So for example, even, uh, and I really appreciate that one. And it's just so great because it just, you know, when, when it's not expected, just their the reaction, the response, and that they they weren't expecting it was it's just the best. Um, what I also enjoy is actually if I'm on an interview or something like that, or someone asks me for a recommendation, I'll say, here's the deal. You write it. And they're like, what? It's a yeah, you write it. Why? Because like it was like in grad school when I would ask for a recommendation, the professors would say, You write it for a number of reasons. It's completely ethical because it's coming from the professor or the person and they know like i know what i would want highlighted based on the interaction that i would have and what i would want to be promoted out there and there's a couple qualifiers though is that i will not sign off on anything that i can't legitimately say that i witnessed and experienced that's not not non-negotiable because it's unethical and then the, I'm, I'm gonna have to edit it you know so that um Unless it's got, a, it's got, a, it, I can't even have it written in my my um, cadence or not even cadence, um, my verbiage because it's going to sound like me. So I think if I'm if I'm asking somebody else for it, but uh, and I just it's so so much easier and it's not hard to highlight others. I mean, it's 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 as if I think there's a mentality that if if we shine the spotlight on somebody else, it's taken from us. There's more than enough sunlight to go around. There's more than enough. It's not, it's the thing. There's not a finite amount of joy. It's infinite. And I found that when it's, when it's cultivated, it grows, it's deeper, it's broader. And there's, it's just, I don't get it. And I don't know if it's nature or nurture. I just know that when I came out of the shoot, they called me bubbles because I was consistently, I was always happy. So uh, but don't get me wrong. There's a time and a place for, you know, I like to, I feel that I'll feel the grief for a moment and then, well, as long as it takes. And uh, then there's a point where, and this is just me, I don't get caught in it. So I'm grateful for that. See, I just be grateful that I don't, yeah, grateful for that. Grateful for feeling grateful. And that's, that's a success and um, moving through and really enjoying it. And I find that the degree and the ability to which I, lean into and welcome all emotions. And if that's, even I've been with someone, did you get excited about this? It's so exciting. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's exciting. What do you, what's the matter? It's not what's the matter with them. It's just not how they respond. And yet I have boundaries that I can't, I won't allow certain, not just personalities, but negativity in my life because it's, I don't have time for that. It's, I mean, life's too short as it is. And it, there's so much, there's so much, joy to experience every emotion and to hold simultaneously what what I used to think of as diametrically opposed uh, or opposite emotions like grief and joy at the same time. That's not, they're not opposite. They're along the spectrum. The opposite of joy or grief is indifference. So I'd rather, I'd rather feel the whole thing and just have at it. Cause you know what? I'm full human. And when I dive in and I know that I feel so much joy and I know what it's like to feel, I mean, just grief is one, um, one example, but so many other, I just, I'm grateful. I'm excited for the success of, of air going on air today with y'all. That's a success. So why not? Why not? Just dive in. That's it. <laughs> And it actually ripples out, isn't it? It's lovely. And I love what you said. There's more than enough sunshine to go around. And I think maybe that's where people that are feeling a bit lack, well, there's not enough. They they hold on to the, but that in itself says it. There is more than enough sunshine to go around. There's more than enough joy to go around. And actually you feeling joyful, you sitting there, Dr. Laura, sends it that ripple and, and maybe joy but it does affect other people so 
don't keep your, your joy to your celebration or, or your wins. So listening to myself, <laughs> because I tend to hold on to my, my wins. I don't celebrate and I want to share more and celebrate more because maybe that would also lift me up more quickly. I do bounce back more quickly than I used to, but maybe just again, celebrate and share the wins I've had. Um, it would help lift things up a bit more quickly. So um, definitely, it's stingy and it's holding. Thank you, Dr. Laurie. Yes, I'm holding on. It's stingy. <laughs> and that's something, you know, it's who, who do you want to be? It's about who you're being. And I, can, I certainly acknowledge, yes, I am being stingy at times. And it's something that is there for me to transform. And so I'm working on that because there are things that I'm not sharing that have an impact on me, and my business, and my family situation. And I'm not, by not sharing, I'm not asked to move forward either because they don't know about the opportunity that I have on offer, you know? So um, that's something I'm working on today and this afternoon we'll be further with. So having this conversation is really bringing it home to me. Uh, how I need to share. I need to share the successes, get out those uh, testimonials and not just put them out once, put them out a few times. Use different ones. You know, I, I put them out and then it's like, oh, that's done. Well, no. <laughs> so get over the fact that I've already done it once. Do it again and do it again and feel good about it. So if any of you have got testimonials, you've got acknowledgements of your work, File, create some and keep sharing it because there are people out there that haven't heard it and um, so who you're then becoming is someone who's open it's someone who is embracing the joy life someone who's being um, I can't think of the word, the word caring comes to mind because it's about self-care as well as caring about others. Caring about what others do and how they win, how they succeed and being willing to celebrate it rather than pulling them down. Because I know society is so good at pulling people down. And what you were saying, Dr. Laura, about us, but yeah, joyful because others didn't achieve. Wow. And that does, there is an share and so it's feeding someone's desire to feel that and maybe that's why there's so many people always constantly pulling others down wanting them not to succeed wanting them to fail because it's feeding something in them and it's not healthy it's not happy and so recognize is there a glimmer of that in you because while it's out there in the world have a look at there might be a little glimmer in there that you're not aware of and then just embrace that and say okay thank you for whatever reason you're there for whatever reason you feel you need this feeling i thank you and i release you I no longer have any need for you. And consciously move on to then, right, who can I celebrate today? I'm bringing that feeling of joyfully acknowledging someone's success. And how does that make you feel? And nurturing and garnering that feeling. Because once you get rid of, you, you create a space where you've got rid of something, you need to fill it with something else because the universe will always fill a void for you if you don't fill it yourself. So pop in those beautiful feelings of, wow, celebrating with others. Because yes, all you 
celebrate with them, the more you're celebrating your part in what they've done as well, they will celebrate with you. And so it's just an upward spiral. It's just, it feels good. And the upper wind says, the more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. So, um, Lomsa, where do you want to go with this? <laughs> um, I like uh, Robin and sister how she does um, celebrating her success, where when, every time she gets something accomplished, something she puts it in the file. So that means, uh, and then she takes it out and show, like when she goes for interview and stuff, it means you're actually having a relationship with that joy, because uh, in order for you to be able to get more celebrations, you have to acknowledge these celebrations, the success that you have, and also you have to acknowledge your uh, other success as well and celebrate your friends as well and uh, I, I think it is uh, it's very very important and for me in order for me to actually even when things are don't going don't go well in my life I always look back where I have had in my life and say if if God can help me to put through this, if God can help me with this, that means that there's something hidden there behind the kittens that I don't know about and the blessings. I'm not going to talk myself out of my blessings, so I'm going to keep celebrating myself. And uh, and also, uh, Dr. Nora, you mentioned that uh, we share success. Sharing success is very, very important. The success stories on uh, on social media, uh, I've seen quite a lot of people uh, sharing the success, and which is, I think, it, when you share, success, you are showing people that there is, a, it is possible. If you want to achieve something, it is possible to to achieve it. But when you don't share, even um, I read the scriptures as well. It says you have to share, and. Even Shanda, Shanda the um, Samta, when I do her events, she teaches a lot that the people intend to worry about people copying them. She says, if you create something and people copy you, don't worry about it. Some people, they, it takes your glory away from you. Don't worry about it. Just celebrate it and say, they've seen something about my products or they've seen something about my life or what I'm doing right and that's why they want to learn more don't see it as them copying you see wanting to learning from you and she says give out information if you succeed and you do something and uh, about information like what dr nora is saying the success that what she's saying that give out information but when you go to other coaches other coaches, in order for them to give you that information, you have to pay for it. They, they'll be like, oh, I have this uh, workshop that I'll give you, but I'll, I'll give, it comes up with, it, it, the workshop it comes, it will come with the information, like I'll, I'll give you this way I found this, way I found this, but she just give it for free. She goes, just go, stop being lazy, go to this website and find this. And then she go, this is how I succeeded. I went to this and this video. Go and watch it and stop being lazy and making excuses. Because that's what we do. I think we are here. Our success, when we celebrate them, when we share them with our family and our friends, I think it, it helps us to actually help others to say it's possible. And for me, in my culture, where I come from, I've started doing this with family as well. In my culture, uh, when you share things with people, they find it really weird. They used to, but with my family, they got used to me that I share whatever success that I do, I share with them. But some cultures, um, they don't. I don't know. Mostly African and Indian cultures, they don't. Indian people, I think they like sharing their success because they're very clever people. 
So most of them are wealthy, so they like to share their wealth. Uh, so I met this Indian guy when I moved here to Henley. I think I met him in London or something, and he was like showing me that this is what I need to do. This is what you need to do. What are you doing? And I'll be like, I'm doing this and you'll be like you should be doing this you should be doing this within two days he was like coaching me to do this to be to be something and i was like wow that's amazing so i think it is important dr laura that we share more our successes and celebrate and carol anna you mentioned that not to put others down even on facebook i've seen people like complaining and saying they get told off by people for putting things or why are you doing this why are you doing this they share their success and uh, put people put, put them down i think it's very, very important to celebrate our friends celebrate our family without putting them down and knowing that if, if that person can do it possible for me to do it so that's how i see life uh over to is it carol Anna or robin uh who is coming next so Carol Anna, can you can you please tell the audience if the audience are watching right now and they don't know who you are, could you please tell them quickly who you are and also mention your retreat? Yes, I've got it right today. Yes. <laughs> yes. Not from it, retreat. It's a retreat. You don't have any word. Yes, it's a retreat. Yes. Nom's is doing a set. I'm doing a retreat. <laughs> That's brilliant. No, yes, we are uh, not Nom's is sir. doing because the talk shows is doing the stuff oh, doing yes, sorry, crazy yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yes I, thank you i'm i'm a as the writing facilitator what i do is i support women becoming more productive with their writing and this retreat that i'm putting on this writing retreat it's a five-day in-person retreat so we can get together just a small group and really bring out that writer within unlock the writer within and move with writing a story feel a bit stuck it may be that you've gone oh i can't do this anymore or it's too, getting too emotional or you feel like you've put so much into it and it's not going anywhere you're getting lots of criticism this is an opportunity to come and to do some inner work and in unlocking the writer within because it's all within you you have the answers and I can hold that space so you can be with the emotions and move from right from there. So that's what I'm excited about that this, after two and a half years, this retreat is happening because it got put off. This is, I think, the fifth day I've had because of COVID and lockdown. And um, yes, so that's, that's what's here at the moment. And that's um, what I'm up to what I'm focusing on. So, uh, writing your story, getting through those emotions, working through those blocks, and then locking that writer within. So, to, to share. Thank you. So what is it that you do <laughs> and celebrate something that's going on for you? <laughs> yeah. So, um, my name is Robin. I am the owner, director, and author at Glow Yoga Kids here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Um, we are a kids yoga movement and mindfulness company. So we are mobile and we go into schools and daycare centers and do events and all of that fun stuff. Um, at the moment, we have so many weekly classes starting up in the fall. We have a few that are ongoing right now and a few that are actually starting in a few days. Um, so that would be the thing that I'm most excited about at the moment. Um, obviously, you know, our regular classes in, in schools and daycares are still operating and everything's lovely there. So if you want to look in for some of those, you can. Um, but the weekly classes are really great because we usually do like a six week series. And it's a really great way for, for each child to kind of progress um, each week building off of the last um, to see that progression in their balance, in their strength, in their um, mindset as well. So it's really, it's truly a celebration of the self. So if you're looking for something to celebrate your kiddos, um, that is a great, a great choice. 
that's what I do. Dr. Laura, did you want to share? Oh yeah, yes, so yes. If, any, if anyone is watching uh, Best in Canada, please connect with Robin and uh, you can contact her on her website and uh, you can contact Carol Ann as well on her social media. She hasn't got her website on, on here, so I can't read it. So please get in touch with them and connect with them and um, join classes. If you've got kids that wants to do yoga, please in Canada, join them. And uh, Dr. Laura, if anyone yes. is watching, and uh, introduce yourself, please, and tell us if there's anything going on at the moment for the audience to buy or to look out for it. Sure. I, um, I am a transformational life coach and I am a two-time international bestselling author, a nationally certified and licensed professional counselor, and I'm also a global storyteller. And I work with achieving, high achieving professional women to prevent them from self-sabotaging in their lives so that they can live the greatest lives of their dreams. And uh, I do have, there's a, I have a summit coming up on October 26th called the Health, Wealth, and Wisdom Summit, a super summit, actually. And um, I'm speaking, I'm organizing some speakers on domestic violence, although um, the entire, we have, we have 10 tracks, so it's pretty big. So you can get in touch with me about that. And my website is www at doctor, that's D-R, Laura Cobb Life Coach, and um, dot com, or my email is Laura at Dr. Laura Cobb, that's D-R, Laura Cobb. So, and I need to take leave at this moment. And this little guy has been here the whole time. And I think he's celebrating all of us. So do you <laughs> want to see Meow Meow? This was so great. Thank you so much. I, I must take leave at this moment and I will be in touch very soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Dr. Laura. And please get in touch with Dr. Mm -hmm. Laura on her website and uh, and check her out as well on uh, Clubhouse. She's, she lives there. <laughs> yes, we all need to get there so we can interview everyone to cheer our joy. Yeah. What's your dream? <laughs> Bless. Bye, Dr. Laura. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so it's much. Fun, isn't it? and it's fun. Some people yeah. come in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was something that I was going to. Oh yes, yeah, celebrating. Celebration is like watering a plant. Worry is just the opposite. It's like cutting the roots. <laughs> I just thought that was a, a wonderful uh, thing to think about. Do you think celebration? You're watering. You know your your goals. It, it enables them to grow and to flourish. But worrying about them. Just think about the scissors and you're snipping off the roots. Are those goals going to be able to grow? So I think that's a beautiful, beautiful picture there. So mm, I think I'll, I'll carry on watering my, my goals. <laughs> More celebrations. And uh, it does inspire others around you to, to um, celebrate as well. Now, what do you celebrate? How do you celebrate? You might be asking. What do you celebrate? Most, some people, they, they just want the big wins. They think, well, it's got to be the big win. It's the goal. That's all I can celebrate. It's not a, that at all. It's about celebrating the little steps. Something that you said you were going to do, and you did it. It's like, yes, I did it. I said I was going to do it, and I've done it. Or it may be that there's a, a, a a team of you have been working together. It's celebrating the team. It's not always just about you. Celebrating maybe somebody has supported you in achieving something. Celebrate that partnership. Celebrate their input in your success and how you got there. You know, and maybe celebrate the fact that you got up today. You got out of bed today because maybe you've been struggling with the anything that you've been struggling with to achieve and you think you might be thinking oh gosh I hadn't thought about that 
there are lots of things you can celebrate and there are many things that we don't think about about celebrating but it is something that you achieve that you maybe thought you couldn't achieve you've been struggling to achieve maybe something hasn't been happening for you and all of a sudden it happens and we're very good at then just moving on and not recognizing well actually i am getting out of bed every morning because you just find yourself doing it stop reflect and as robin was saying it's about reflection you stop you pause you think ah wow yes i've been getting every day and then celebrate <laughs> yeah maybe do a happy dance put on some music a favorite song or piece of music do a dance but celebrate maybe just ring up a friend and share it with somebody or even if you like putting it onto your social media share it put it out there i've managed to do this and for me that's a step forward and i'm i'm celebrating but as you said mom so some people are very good at um putting you down and go well, what's so great about that how can you bounce back because again it's your choice you can allow yourself by someone else's question of well, what's so great about that or you can go okay they asked me a question what's so great about that and you can answer and say well what's so great about that is it's something for me that i've achieved and for me it's about celebrating just the smallest accomplishments and leave it at that or just ignore it just send them blessings because actually they themselves might be struggling to achieve and they're not acknowledging the little steps and just send them love and blessings because actually very often it's nothing to do with you it's nothing about you it's all about where they're at and so just okay and step back and stop again reflect this was it an amazing achievement for me. Go and share it again with another friend who will go yes and, and help, you know, with that energy because it does boost your energy. And actually, it's I just read this morning is celebrating can have several different positive impacts on our brain. And it's different chemicals that start being um, released. So oxytocin and endorphins more of those get released which means that you're more willing to try something out that maybe you weren't willing to try out before um you experiment a bit more you have more chance and a greater success serotonin actually you have more focus once that's um been around your body innovation motivation certainly greater focus and dopamine is another one that gets released. And this allows you, gives you higher levels of concentration. So it means all those distractions, you just ignore them. So those put down comments are just a distraction. And it means you can concentrate more on what you're doing. So just think about, you know, those chemicals that you're releasing in your body that help you. And so you can then move on and just keep moving, keep celebrating. Um, it's your choice. As we said before, it's always your choice. And I, I found a, a quote. It's from it's a, from the mystery beyond uh, beyond mind. That's something to do with our show, our show International Foundation. And it's if you want the next moment to be unhappy, you will have to become become unhappy in this moment of unhappiness unhappiness is born happiness happiness is born 
whatsoever you want to reap in the next moment you will have to sow right now for the next moment is already here so recognize where you're at if joy is what you want in the next moment bring it into this moment if you want unhappiness in the next moment bring it into this moment just recognize where you are now impacts your next moment and the next moment because they're here just like that so what what sort of things could you celebrate um robin what would you suggest people could celebrate yeah well i love i love that you said you could literally celebrate anything um i think that that's something that people don't yeah like you said like people don't think that they can celebrate small things or seemingly small things so for a lot of people getting out of bed um you know taking care of their mental health to uh, you know outsiders might seem like a small thing but it's huge right getting out of bed taking a shower you know um i'm not sure if you heard, have heard of the spoon theory before um but it's like basically how it works is like you're given each day you're given like a handful of spoons theoretical spoons um and every time you do an activity you take spoons away so like things like getting out of bed maybe that's one spoon um you know making yourself breakfast is two spoons or something like that so you're you're taking spoons away and some people have the capacity have the mental capacity and the physical capacity to have a lot of spoons and so they can do a lot of things in the day and not have to refuel right away but the minute that you you run out of spoons you're supposed to refuel rest enough that's done it's time to, to go to sleep and, and that. So some people that don't have the mental capacity or the physical capacity to do as much will start their day with less spoons, right? And so they kind of just you know, it's like getting out of bed actually takes three spoons, you know, and uh, and they already start with less. So maybe getting out of bed and taking a shower is all that they can do that day, right? So like things like that, um, just keeping that in mind that even if yours is seemingly small to other people, it's maybe because you woke up with less spoons. Maybe it's because you just don't have the mental capacity today and you still are able to celebrate those things, even if they seem small, right? Um, so I think that's really important. And then another thing I was gonna mention, just on that same topic, um, there was a trend going around a while back. I think it was on TikTok, maybe on Instagram. And it was where people were sharing things about humans that make them smile, that make them happy and make them smile. And it was silly things. It was like, I love when people crinkle their nose when they laugh, or I love when, um, you know, people are, are so amazed the first time they see an animal or something like that, or like just little things like that. And they were, it was this whole trend and they, and it was always really like unique things that you just wouldn't think about. Um, normally it was like, Oh, I love when people like smell their coffee before they drink it. Like it seems so small and so silly, but like, it was like something that just like, this is something small about the human existence that makes me happy. And I feel like if we started looking at our own lives that way, that we will be so much more grateful and excited about every little moment. It's like, ah, oh, you know what? I love when, like, I love that every time I have breakfast, I have to, like, set my cutlery out first. And I have to, like, set out my plate or something like that. Something just small, like, just recognizing how much you love and appreciate those little things that you do that are maybe unique to you or maybe aren't um, is a great way to start celebrating the little things is a great way to start celebrating those things so i mean it literally can be anything like caroline had mentioned you could be celebrating sunny days you could be celebrating chocolate with peanuts in it or something um <laughs> spring flowers it doesn't matter right so celebrating just life in general and then celebrating the little things that make you is enough to start building that mindset, growing um, and sending all of those happy chemicals, like Caroline was saying, into your body, and then making you realize, okay, I can literally celebrate everything 
And so when those big moments come, it's like even bigger. It's like, holy moly, like this is amazing. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I have to share. I don't know yeah. I remember you saying about those spoons and then maybe oh, people would recognize yeah. that if all you have is a couple of spoons when you wake up, the more you celebrate, the more likely you are to wake up with more spoons each morning. Exactly. Replenish. You heard it. Yes. Yeah. Your replenishment gets more and more. So um, I, that's, that, that sounds lovely. Yeah. 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 No, so. Yeah. You should. Look what about, there's a whole. Studies. Studies. I was going to say you look it up because there's a bunch of studies on it and uh, more information on that. Okay. Spoon I love the yeah. spoon. I love the spoon idea. I think it's uh, like Robin is saying, uh, some people, they start their day with less spoon. I think it, um, now when I wake up, I'm just going to say, how many spoons do I have today? <laughs> and I'm going to celebrate myself. I'm going to thank and be grateful and just acknowledge uh, people around me and I acknowledge my breathing and I acknowledge everything and just celebrate. Also, Carol Anna, I'm just going to play the music and celebrate more mm -hmm. and recognize um, live in the moment, celebrate in the moment. So thank you so much for that. Words of encouragement, Robbie, before we leave? Um, yeah, I mean, I think just echoing what we've already said, I think just um, trying to look for the little things and uh, and celebrating those as much as you can. And when when I say celebrate, I also don't mean like you need to throw yourself a party or you need to have like you know some huge soiree, but just like having a moment of gratitude for those things, um, whether it be with a few deep breaths or maybe you get to go and have that chocolate sundae you want or something like that as a way to to uh yeah. to celebrate yourself yeah go ahead caroline yeah i, I agree and it is about something where we were having to celebrate and that was always something we want to do to celebrate it can be anything so yes that, that bar of chocolate that you want that you've all that you keep putting off having or maybe you wanted to go to the cinema you know treat yourself or maybe just having a bath, giving yourself the luxury of a of time to yourself, having a bath, giving yourself a bit of um, warmth in that bath and just wallowing and feeling comfortable. Okay. Uh, maybe it's having something, a, a particular meal that you haven't had in a while that you really love and you keep putting on. It can be anything. Or it could be, right, I'm celebrating, I'm going out and, you know, go and have a party somewhere and invite a whole load of people. You know? Or I'm going away for a week, book yourself a holiday. It's however you want to celebrate it. Or it could just be you decide, right, I'm going to sit here, pick my glass, I'm going to pick my glass of water up, whatever you're drinking, and go, cheers, I did it. <laughs> It's whatever you want to do. There is no right or wrong. That's what's here. What you celebrate, how you celebrate, the main thing is it. Because that is what will have the impact on your own mental health. And it is about you looking after yourself so that you can keep bouncing back. It's by you keep bouncing back, you help others to keep bouncing back. And so it goes out. So, yeah, that's my last word. <laughs> Keep bouncing. Is it a tigger? Yeah. I'm bouncy, 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 bouncy. <laughs> There's one thing about tiggers is oh, I'm the young. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I'll say just ask yourself some questions. Maybe uh, when you even need, you don't have to. Uh, doesn't have to be like a big why am i echoing it feels like i'm echoing um 
you don't have to like wait to celebrate big things those little things like what robin was saying you just get up in the morning and celebrate yourself getting up in the morning in that gratitude of you know what uh i'm alive and just celebrate yourself and the success that i think the more you celebrate you the more the people around you when you see people succeeding and you want them to to celebrate more and more the more god gives you more so the more you receive the more you 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 wish yourself you you wish good to others and also acknowledge your success those little things we take for granted and the more blessings come your way so just celebrate the little things and the success the strength the the um the time even if parents who have good children when you do your homework with your children just celebrate and when they get those uh, they finish the homework and they go to school just celebrate as a parents that you know what it feels good to be a mom or to be a dad to be able to help my children and just take them to school and pick them up it is a win because some people don't make it there so you're able to make it so it's just celebrate and we are here at Ngozi talk shows uh monday to friday 1 p.m uk time and carol Anne has a, a retreat that is coming up and she did mention the retreat and then goes talk shows has a summit uh, saturday not tomorrow but next saturday and uh, please guys if you're watching us and join us uh, next week for the summit and uh, if there is anything that you want to uh you want to do the work for yourself or, or you want to learn more about selling you and you want to find your own voice and lead from within please do contact uh go to talk shows and i'll be able to connect you with the right person uh 30 minutes chat then uh, we find out where you are at and then they uh, are connect you with the person that can help you and live with grace everyone have a lovely weekend and god bless